picture of you i guess i, I don't have a better picture than that <laughs> come on you look gorgeous yeah, come on it's a war be yourself think, it's like i didn't uh, i think we are i did the morning work well oh hold on you got to mute that you watching your ads what? <laughs> one second guys yeah yeah all right i think we're live we are we live, are live. Scary. <laughs> hello everyone hello hello welcome to bahography talk number 16 live frames you guys know frames from india what's up frames hi and our special guest Grays of Westminster, Khan and Rebecca Becky. What's going on? How's everybody doing? Really good. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. What's going on? Hey, frames, long time no see. Hello. I don't know if you can see me. Yet. We're getting there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Nice soft fox effect. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. this yeah. is the this is the Tamron, by the way. So it's adapted. So it's doing a great job. Is it Nick and Tamron though, or just Tamron? <laughs> it's Nick and Tamron, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, if you know, me and Frames did some live streams, I mean, some shows and earlier. We got some pretty cool moments there, but we're happy to have you guys on. Uh, pretty excited, you know. I've been watching you guys for a while now. I like what you're doing, you know. Uh, your shows, you know, uh, they're very informative. And I like the on-location stuff you guys do, you know, out and about in the town. Yeah, it's a hard work and it's really cold outside in the UK for at least half of the year. So it, <laughs> it means that we don't always want to do the on-location stuff, but but it's a lot of fun and I think it communicates quite well. Yeah, we enjoy it. That's cool. I want to welcome everyone. I want to welcome all the viewers. They're streaming in right now. And by the way, this will be streamed on Apple Podcasts too if you missed the live and it'll be replayed on YouTube. So we want to ask these guys some questions. Uh, you know, uh, I've never been to the UK and I've, you know, I'm very, if, if I'm there, I'll be visiting you guys for sure. Uh, okay. You guys are a Nikon exclusive uh, shop out in the UK. That's right. We're in London, so about eight minutes from Victoria, uh, which is a mainline train station, quite easy to get to. Um, so if you're coming into Gatwick or Heathrow, you'll be able to get to us quite quickly. <laughs> just take train 701 and just come here straight away. You know, everyone knows this. Not at 701. Yeah. <laughs> We're not open that early. Um, but yeah, we just sell Nikon. We've been, uh, obviously not us, because we're not old enough to have been doing it for that long, but the shop's in its 36th anniversary now. Nice. Unless we started, we started when you were four. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but we've been here. We've been here for a while. We've been here for what now? Four, fourteen. Years. Fourteen years. Yeah. Gosh, yeah, that's been a while. Yeah. yeah. I, I bet you guys have some stories to tell. <laughs> so many. <laughs> yes, the ones we can't say live on the internet, unfortunately. The, the not safe for work ones. But we do. We we do have a lot of fun, and obviously, we really love the brand. And and Gray, you know, decided to make it a Nikon exclusive shop to to be a bit different to be honest to be something in a in a sea of camera dealers when camera shops were kind of on every street corner it was a unique selling point which uh obviously now that camera shops are sadly slowly becoming a rare species we're we're still a unique selling point by just doing neck on i think that's true i mean there are not many you can only shops in the world i think there are what three i think one in paris one in tokyo and then one in london that's us yeah yeah nice nice that's awesome frames if you got something Someone to say said, jump in cut me yeah, off don't yeah. worry about it yeah, yeah so it's like you know kids in a candy shop but then someone wrote grace is the nikon candy shop so i guess <laughs> like, we, we, i think the, uh, everyone else is jealous <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you when travel, be there. Yeah, yeah when travel's a bit more sort of uh doable we, we generally have our doors open, you know, Monday to Friday. In fact, we used to be open on Saturdays as well. And that would be a prime time for, for tourists to come in. But we did, we did quite often get people who would say, you know, I just came into London specifically to visit the store. So it hasn't, um, that hasn't changed much, I don't think. That's true. I, but yeah. Oh, imagine that. I have, I, have, I have a question and I'm very curious. I'm sure a lot of people are curious about it. 
So what what happens? Uh, what's your relationship with Nikon? So whenever there's a new product release, for example, the the 400 mm 2.8, so do you get to like just open the box and play with it for as long as you like, and then yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> like and then just go. like I keep my cameras on my bed. Like when I I whenever there's a new toy, I I don't want to put it back to a shelf. I like I, I want to keep it with me. Yeah, do you get yeah. to do that. I mean, we we do get because obviously we just do Nikon and we have the channel. We do try and get loan samples. The shop is kind of treated the same as any other shop, but most of the shops in the UK have their own YouTube channels and they have their own marketing department, uh, which is kind of us at the moment. Yes. Um, so there is a, a waiting list usually for these things. For example, with the Z9, um, we were able to get one for one weekend and it was only because the head of MPS was on holiday that week and he didn't take his Z9 on holiday. So we got to see the pre-production model for you know, two, two days. And then we had to give it back, which was very sad. <laughs> um, the 400 millimeter we haven't seen in real life yet, but we do have, for example, we have very good friends in Nikon who are the, the Nikon school instructors, yeah. Rishi, who you probably know, he's got his own YouTube channel, um, always yeah. gets the, the goodies early. And if he happens to be in town, doing a shoot and we can somehow liaise with him and sometimes we'll get to see things sooner rather than later. But we do, we do have to wait somewhat patiently like everyone else a lot of the time. Yeah, that's true. And also if you think about it, let's say the 400 mil announcement, we only found out maybe not even two days in advance, something like, yeah, like a day and a half in advance. Uh, and then we were told this is coming. We were told what it is, but we didn't have any images to share. We didn't have any documents that we could see. Yeah. So we were just told this is happening. This is going to be announced uh, in a, in you know what thirty six hours, and that's all we had to work with. So we we don't you know sometimes we can see a pre production model. So uh, sometimes we don't. So it really depends on the product. And let's say like something like Z seven two firmware that came out at the same time as four hundred mil lens. We didn't know about it at all. No, we knew at the same time as everyone else on, yeah. on stuff like that. You, you, the Mr. Gray's is a rocker. I heard he's a <laughs> is he a drummer or he's a photographer for rock bands. He used to be a music photographer. That's how he started in photography. He used to go to to um, concerts and and photograph. Obviously, he had film cameras at the time. But yeah, absolutely, he's a, a big lover of of heritage rock music. Well, f- tell him that I give a special rock and roll. <laughs> cool. <to me>. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, besides working at the shop, do you guys uh, do paid assignments for yourselves as photographers? Like, are you guys like part-time photographers as well? Paid gigs? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, pre it's a bit difficult to to compare work before COVID and after COVID because my main thing that I used to do was weddings events and uh mostly classical concerts actually as opposed to anything yeah and um all (laughs) of that kind of stopped during lockdown and then my time has kind of fully gone into the youtube channel now so i don't have any spare i I also have a family so you know (laughs) i have to to spend time with them sometimes that's a (laughs) full-time job isn't it it's a full-time job so um so all that kind of stuff has has gone on the back burner but yeah i have i have done a lot of that in the past and it all kind of just slowed down during covid no events were happening no concerts no not really any public weddings either that's cool can you what are your some of your influences for wedding photography like the guys um I mean, I, at the time that I was mainly doing wedding photography, it wasn't as big of an Instagram, uh, Instagrammable thing as it is now. Yeah. I find that a lot of wedding photographers are also influencers in their own right. So there are a lot of accounts that I still kind of follow, keep my eye on. The, the way that weddings have been done hasn't changed much, but, but styles have mm. moved and shifted since, uh, since I was doing it, even, even sort of two, three years ago. The last wedding I shot was July, 2019. So even since then. Uh, oh, it's all changed now. It's all changed. It's all, it's all shot on iPhones now, <laughs> don't you know? Everybody, yeah. everybody gets given oh. little cameras that they have to shoot with. And then the, the main photographer does the pose shots and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. What about you, Khan? You shoot? Uh, I do, I do, but again, the same as Bacon, not as much as I used to, but uh, yeah, I've been working part, as a part-time, so 
be kind of full time here. So, but yeah, as a part time, I've been doing this for what the same about fifteen years or so. And uh, for me, it was mainly kind of portraiture and studio based photography. So that was uh, that was what I was doing. But again, if let's say I've done a lot of Airbnb style shoots, so interior type of things before the whole thing happens, you know, I would do events. Um, I haven't done. I've done what three weddings, um, and that's pretty much it. So it wasn't my thing. But uh, I've just kind of it came there I was asked to have done it but generally for me studio portraiture beauty fashion that's where I was at and then an occasional random thing that would be thrown at me I would just do it mm. oh, you like the fun stuff huh not the weddings <laughs> uh, weddings are too long anyway Wedding, weddings are hard work Con yeah. is uh, is actually an amazing beauty and fashion photographer he's very very modest he's really <laughs> really good so um so yeah he did a lot of that uh, up until a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, so now, I, I mean, not not so much to be honest with you. Again, the kind of uh, the YouTube takes a lot of time. But again, like yeah, did a couple of events uh, this year. Not so much. Again, that was all kind of, you know, was dependable on how many you know people can get in or you know we had lockdowns, etc. Let's say the Christmas event I did for this um, big corporation. Normally they would have two thousand people in this Hilton hotel. And they only had, I think, 1,100 people this time. So for them, it was quite a small event. And I was working as a team kind of for, for how many? Three photographers covering the whole event, et cetera. So, but again, yeah, a lot of it nowadays is restricted. So I don't think we're kind of having it full on as we used to have before. Yeah. Nice. So do you, do you own any other camera brand other than Nikon? Are, <laughs> are you allowed to own? Are we allowed to say? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Yeah. It's a good question. Um, digital, know. digital, no. Yeah. Film, film cameras. I have, I have several yeah. different brands. Yeah, Gray doesn't allow us to have any. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true at all. Uh, um, so. I, I used to have. Um, I had a couple of Fujis. I had the X100, then I had the XT10, and the XT20, and then I gave up with Fuji. Um, uh, and I've stuck. I've been, I've always had Nikons at some point throughout, you know, even if while I was using my Fujis, my main camera was my D700, if I remember the timing correctly. Um, or then the D750. Yeah. Yeah. And then the D850. But, uh, but film camera wise, I have a Pentax 6.7. I've got a little Rolly B35, which is my like little travel manual companion uh i've got a holger mm-hmm. <laughs> uh well you got nikon l 35 af recently yes the same as me as well and you've got a few yeah but actually we had fujis in a very similar time period when nikon had dslrs and they didn't make any z series cameras so the only mirrorless system they had at the time is nikon one and for me i'm a bit yeah. of a Kind of a sensor snob so I, for me it was the sensor was a little bit too small you know and you know i went with fuji because i like the looks and they kind of you know like especially like the x pro series for me it just looks beautiful it's a beautiful object to hold so so we went through that time where we had our nikon as our commercial professional job camera so again i went i had d800e i went for d810 d850 um d50 still my kind of to go camera so I'm, um, you know, well, maybe one day I'll get that night, but I'm hoping for that eight personally. But our kind of takeaway with you on holiday camera was a Fuji brand. So that's what we had. And then when Nikon came up with that series cameras, now we're shooting with that six as our kind of second cameras to go. But yeah, with film, I'm, I've got my Mi RZ67, my Mi S7 as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of uh, Nikon 35 cameras like FM3, L35 AF, F100. That's cool. So, so. So since since you're a sensor snob, <laughs> since since you're that, yeah, let's go there. Let me let me dig my own grave. <laughs> I'm gonna have yeah. to just stop him mid sentence. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I look. I've, I've if you whenever I have um, uh, gone on to FujiRumors.com or dot whatever, I've seen how they talk about the APS-C sensor being the just the right balance for everything. And whenever I go to any of these micro four thirds sensor forums, and these are the same things. And then mm-hmm. I think just yesterday it was DP review where they talked about how the, you know, you don't get better bokeh. Mm, um, yeah. I saw that article. Yes. They, right. They did a video so, on that. Yeah. And I have a theory since the bodies can now can get, get smaller. Uh, you are not uh, you don't it's much easier to create a compact full frame body today than it mm-hmm. was 
in the dslr days so do, do you think nikon should focus on uh, dx or just get out of it and focus on making cheaper lenses for just you know replace dx with more affordable full frame do you see we that have, happening because i i don't see hear anything on dx Mm. Yeah, it's all we related. had a discussion today on our podcast. We recorded the podcast just before the show, and uh, we literally had discussion about that. And uh, it was interesting because DP Review published the um, review on ZFC, and one of their complaints was no DX lenses. And then someone put in the comment saying that, well, yes, Nikon, you know, yeah, Nikon does have the uh, DX lenses. And then my point was, well, does Fuji have a full frame lenses for their full frame lens for, full, for their full frame cameras? They don't because they don't make those. So uh -huh. idea there is it's good to have as many sensors as possible. It's, I think it's important for Nikon to have a DX line and we definitely need to see more lenses, especially on wide angle side of things. Yeah, for sure. We need to have a professional mini Z9 body or Z90. We definitely need to have that. We need to cover those bases. Now, for longer range, we don't really need DX lenses because, let's say, 7200 can cover DX, if you see what I mean. Yeah. What, we lose, what we miss is the 10 to, let's say, 24 side of things. You know, we don't need to have particular DX prime unless you do them as a pancake style. And we already have 28 and 40 mil lens, which are pancake. And then 28 is roughly 40 mil on DX and 40 becomes 60. What we need to have is something like 18 mil maybe or 23 mil that will cover 28 mil and 35 mil on DX crop. So for travel photography, that's important. I don't, you know, like when I say I'm a sensor snob, I, you know, I don't mind. I mean, I used to use micro four thirds and I'm shooting six by seven um, film, uh, you know, cameras. So, I use them all. Uh, the reason why I didn't like Nikon One system particularly is because it was one sense. So it was even smaller than Micro Four Thirds. And for yeah. me, I was, you know, I was shooting DX on full frame. And for me, just the image quality difference was dramatic, especially on the high ISOs where noise was quite apparent on those tiny sensors. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, by the way, guys, I'm reading. Uh, we're reading your uh, comments. I'm reading your comments. Uh, Fell, good point there. He says, glad to see the Nikon community take things into their own hands and <laughs> pushing the brand. Rock and roll. <laughs> so uh, how are sales compared to, you know, a couple of years ago? Can you tell us something about that? I mean, it's, it's interesting how I think a lot of photographers have changed the way that they've been shooting in, in recent years. Obviously, professional photography took a bit of a stop over over the period of I mean I can't believe that we're still talking about it <laughs> but over the period of, of basically two years where we were all kind of stuck and nobody was able to really do professional photography I liked seeing the fact that a lot of photographers were finding different subjects and different things if they couldn't do their their pro work um, but definitely we saw kind of like a slowdown in in professionals taking up taking up new cameras also there wasn't really that much on offer I would say um and then entry level we saw more people buying bigger cameras because they decided to take up photography as like a lockdown hobby mm. um which was which was really nice it, it saw a whole new breed of of photographers and then we also saw a lot more people take up film um because True. film photography has you know I remember when we first started working here and there were quite a lot of people who said, you know, oh, film is dying and it's basically dead and nobody wants film cameras anymore. And we were always still, Grays was always still selling film cameras um, because we have a, a thriving secondhand department. And um, it was, you know, maybe one or two bodies a week, sometimes five or six bodies a week, but it wasn't like it wasn't the majority of our sales at any point. But I definitely see now, I mean, film sales, just we have a another camera shop around the corner who sells all kinds of brands, mainly not Nikon because we're here. Um, and uh, and they were saying how they sell a thousand rolls of film a week, every single week. Um, and, and they just, they're, they're struggle like most people that they can't get the stock. So I don't think that demand has, has lowered. The sales have changed a bit in, in what we've been selling, but um, the YouTube channels definitely kind of kept us in contact with fellow Nikon lovers, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, um, it keeps you busy, right? The YouTube channel, I, I find it funny because uh, the pandemic and the lockdowns and the jobs got rescheduled or canceled. 
but the YouTube camera uh, uh, community with all these new releases have just exploded, you know, like new camera after new camera after new camera. And they yeah. can't even keep it with the supply chain issues and all that. You can't keep up. You know, I find that very, very interesting, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I don't know what is, I forgot the exact, uh, the correct way to pronounce his name. I think Martin something. He does a lot of very nice, uh, well put together reviews on, on all brands really. And uh, like a couple of weeks back, he was talking about is the camera market going to survive because of YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting it's like a it's like a self-referential economy you know it's like uh youtube making uh, people making videos on youtube about cameras and therefore people are buying cameras for youtube and then it's like a i don't know it's, uh, it's i didn't hear it fully but it's an interesting thought it is an it interesting thought you know, it's the thing about the whole photographic market. We obviously it's kind of shrinking. It's for me, like I see it with kind of hi-fi. If you think about hi-fi equipment, the things can get really expensive there and escalate. But it's quite a small market where people know kind of know each other, know the brands, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. With digital photography as well, with things become more expensive, and then obviously with iPhone dominance and smartphone dominance. We've seen different types of photography. So it's like mirrorless and DSLR market has become, obviously we've seen it in terms of sales a year over the year. So it's become smaller and smaller. But then what we start to see with, let's say, YouTube or other communities, like let's say big forums on like DP reviews or big Reddit communities, et cetera. So we see that people want to talk about photography in general, about the equipment they have, and they want to find, you know, the, their own circles they want to communicate with. Imagine like having a photography club, your local photography club that you could go and see, but obviously with a lockdown, with everything, and obviously the internet, now you can have your camera club on your computer. So I think that helps each other because, you know, we have people shooting Nikon, people shooting different other brands, and they can find people like, like-minded like people to talk to. I think it's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, YouTube, you know, have a discussion, have arguments, whatnot. It's all good. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, they're going back and forth that's what it's all about you know as long as you don't insult anybody in the comments yeah. i'm all for it you know hey my stuff is better no my stuff is better no you're wrong no i'm right you know i love it you know that's what it's all about right frames hey mm -hmm. frames hire your yeah, mic just well, a tad I'm with the game so sure. hey frames <laughs> put, can you hire the level of your mic just a little bit you're a little low oh just a I tad know. though we don't want any feedback yeah <laughs> right right no i'm trying to figure out how to do that uh, if you know what, you might mess things up. Just li leave it alone. It's fine. Don't worry. I'll figure out. Okay. Uh, question for you guys. You guys are uh, spend a lot of time together at this uh, doing videos and at the store. How's the setup? Is it like a counter? You guys are behind the counter or how's that setup go there? Are you guys office or? Well, we're at the moment we're upstairs. So when we started the YouTube channel, I was quite literally filming at my desk, which was downstairs in the back of the shop. Um, and we'd have to fit it in between customers walking in. Um, so those very early kind of quite, let's call them raw, <laughs> raw videos where I'm doing like how to's and pointing at stuff. And I quite like shows. I've seen those. Yeah. So those were at my desk downstairs. Um, and then obviously when, when we decided when we had to work from home i moved we started doing live streams and i was doing them from my home office whilst also homeschooling and doing uh shop work and then coming into the shop just once a week to to process orders and and stuff we kind of had a skeleton crew to keep the shop going so that, that was during lockdown that was during lockdown um and then when we came back we were working in the second hand department and we would film mm -hmm. each week down there so the videos from about probably a year ago, plus year to year, mm -hmm. thereabouts, uh, are all done in the secondhand department. We'd have to close off the secondhand department on a Friday afternoon uh, and a Monday afternoon when we started doing the Nikon report as well. Uh, get all the equipment out, set it up. 
yeah. and uh, it would it would be kind of like not just an hour of live streaming, but then another hour of set up and takedown at the beginning and end. So it was yeah. it was quite painful. Um, and then I finally convinced Paul Gray that I needed to take a corner of his office, which is what we have now. It's actually also my office. I moved up up off the sales floor just because it's very difficult to do that many things at once. Um, and so now we have a sort of dedicated corner, which is why we're always in the same position each week. Uh, and we have our studio set up and we kind of have to move things around, but it's not anywhere near as difficult as it was when we first started, which was, um, which was painful, really. Challenging, yeah. Challenging. <laughs> <laughs> and people say, why is your audio different? Oh, it's I don't know what we've done this week. <laughs> yeah, no, it's understandable. Uh, those are cool posters back there. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so these are actually, these are Nikon Owner magazine. So Grace has a sister company um, called Nikon Owner, which is a quarterly magazine that people can subscribe to. And then we also have all the posters of the movies that we've supplied lenses for. They actually go all the way around the room, um, but you can't see that. <laughs> nice. Can you say Nikon? Like, can you pronounce it the, the way the Americans do? Nikon. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> just, just, you, Americans don't know English. They just they don't know. How to <laughs> well, the thing is that it, it's a Japanese word, right? So it comes from Nippon Kogaku. So it's Nikon. So. Yeah, no, no, no. That, 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 that's, not, that's not the why. The why is this Americans just. <laughs> no, I know. People correct me here too. They go, hey, it's not Nikon, dude. It's Nikon. I'm like, right. I'll, I'll continue but you know, uh, grammatically speaking, uh, I think uh, proper prop names you can pronounce it the way you want to. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Yeah. Now yeah, I was just curious Nikon. to see how it sounded from them when they say Nikon. 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 That sounds wrong. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel dirty now. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. By the way, uh, an interesting thing. I just figured out that there is about a 20 second delay. Uh, yeah. In yeah. the live. I didn't. Yeah. It's, I didn't know it's that. 30 seconds usually. So oh. um, usually people tell us we've done something wrong and, and we're way, way past that by the time we've read the comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I really like this question. Do you guys ever disagree or fight? Always. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Not really. No, I mean we've worked together long enough. Yeah, um, we used to share a desk because oh, yeah. there was only one desk. It was a standing desk. It was a Metro D kind of type of desk, a little reception desk. We used to share that. So let's say Becky would spend an hour there, and then we would swap, and I would answer my emails, and I would swap again. So, so we've been working together for donkey's years, really. Yeah. Khan, you seem like a very nice dude. I mean, I, seriously, like I would, I can't see getting into an argument or a fight with you because you just seem like a nice, humble guy. <laughs> it's a yeah it's 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 a different we we i think we when when we have arguments i think we they're more productive arguments where we actually try to say why is it good but mm. uh, generally i don't remember actually us like raising voices or anything no, no i don't think we argue argue no. but we we share thoughts and ideas but usually we're, we're quite good at seeing the other person's point of view when whether that's each other or anyone in in the shop to be honest we, all, we all get along really well so uh i've not had to tell anyone off for quite a while <laughs> like oh, yeah. you know i'm like always looking forward to it i can't find anyone <laughs> victorian you know? school mistress here no <laughs> yeah. i think um i think we all get along really well and that's that's a lot to do with the with the people that we work with everybody is is lovely and um and even if they don't have an immediate answer because obviously con and i are are the most technical people in the shop aside from gray um so we try and help where possible but even if someone doesn't really know the answer to a question or is struggling with a with a customer in inquiry or anything like that we we try and help each other that's true mm -hmm. that's cool nice yeah. frames jump in if you have a question cut me no, off. no i was I was intentionally quiet. I want to see whether you have a question or not. Oh, no, I'm <laughs> waiting for you. By the way, <laughs> listen. Oh, by the way, before you, before you start, Frames, before you start, Frames. It's a good is, thing. Yeah, Frames <laughs> is a very philoso philosophical, like, photographer. Not at all. <laughs> like, no, he just has these ideas and these <laughs> thoughts. I love it. I love just listening. Go ahead. Go ahead, buddy. No, listen. Uh, no, pe people are very happy to see the way you're, uh, I think, what, you're getting fitter. 
I didn't want to say losing weight, right? Some they they're always they're noticing it. I think, right? Us, some ones. No, yeah, Vagan. Yeah. 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 Well, for us is for not, me, it's definitely I need we're to not losing any weight. Yeah, I'm way over you to go to the gym. It's yeah. been a cold, cold winter. <laughs> Are you talking Sounds about like- me? Are you talking yeah, about me? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, I have a. I just started a series. Like once a week, I I update my progress. I have a weight loss challenge, six months, and a lot of photographers are taking up that challenge with me, and it's great. Every week, I post a new video. I just started, so we have six months to lose weight and get in shape. So doing great. Oh, I might join you. That's I'm great. definitely need one. Yeah, one challenge yeah. for me. Yeah, check it out. It's called It's Time Photography and Frames. Are you doing it too? Yeah, no, I'm I'm right now. I'm trying to find that comment. Someone, oh, Yamin said, guys, do you notice a difference in Vagan? Oh my God, inspirational in such a short period. Keep it up, bro. It's been two weeks, Great. but you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, frames, you got to develop the chest and you know the shoulders too, man. Yeah. Push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've not but, uh, been doing that for like six months. That's cool. Uh, you have any? You guys have any crazy sales s- stories like? one of the craziest you'll never forget you know like any, yeah or any like return stories where they they bring back something and it's like not the same camera or something <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've had a few interesting ones of the returns i mean crazy sales probably the most memorable one is the the six mil which obviously made in in the uk at least that actually kind of made photographic history it appeared in magazines and everything it was it kind of broke the records because it was one of the most expensive lenses ever sold it sold for a hundred thousand uh so that and it's an incredibly rare lens i don't know if you've seen the six mil it's yeah this it's it looks giant. like a i've seen it it looks like a big dish yeah, yeah. thank you exactly so so that was quite phenomenal in fact um we had two uh, the first and we've had one in the shop we had it on display it belonged to oh, nikon wow. and they asked for it back for a for a show um and then unfortunately someone knocked it over at the show and it ended up with yeah. a big scratch it was a little girl, a little I girl think, yeah. No way. yeah luckily she was okay the lens yeah. was not so okay but it wasn't um, cheap or anything it was just a scratch it was so, just a scratch yeah. yeah it was a big solid piece of glass um but we actually managed to source one in japan in fact in fact i think the the gentleman that bought it the company that we got it from in Japan had not wanted to sell it to him. They wanted to sell it to us so we could sell it to him. Mm. So <laughs> that was the second one, not the first one. Anyway, so um, so the six mil has been an iconic lens, but I mean, we've had all kinds of things, everything from, as I was saying, the posters back behind us here are for um, stop motion animation. I can't tilt the camera because it's too far away, but you know, Let me see how it comes films like... Uh, Paranorman and Chicken Run and Wallace and Gromit. There you go. You see some of those. <laughs> Your head oh. is like right in the frame. <laughs> anyway, cool. um, you can zoom back in now. Come on. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Onboard cameraman. Um, and what they do is they buy a series of lenses. So they'll buy, for example, 10 or 20 manual focus 55 mil f 2.8 macros and then they'll buy another 20 105 2.5s and another 20 35 1.4s and they put them on these stop motion animation rigs so they go on their professional you know usually red cameras yeah um and the reason they buy manual focus glass is is because it's it's got that consistent look the nikon glass is so well made uh that that they know that if they buy them within the right serial batch every lens will perform the same so so we had some very i'd say impressive sales uh to place like and it's always nice to watch a film like kubo and the two strings um and wes anderson's um isle of dogs isle of dogs yeah that That was was amazing that, I mean, that you watch those films and you think, oh, I had some small part exactly. in that. So that's that's always yeah. really satisfying. And it's always a challenge to find those lenses yeah. in such quantities because, yeah, it's not something that you can get like 20, 35 F2s or something like this. So you have to kind of go all over the world and try to find those lenses pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Awesome. So since you're talking about uh, gear from the like old times, I, I want to know, who made the first integrated uh, grip camera, unibody design? Who was it? Was it the F4 or? Who made the F4? 
no no who made nikon made their phone but who who made the first unibody uh, you know integrated grip design oh i see okay so f actually f3 came out with a, with already with a little grip isn't it kind of but it's not the same as the f4 because the f4 on its own actually when you talk about grip do you mean like a motor drive built in because obviously uh, they all had built in grip, grip. No, the, the, the built in like a like like a d6 or the z9 like mm. so before they had a, like, even the f4 doesn't really have that deeper grip well it's an mb20 it's quite shallow that's true that's true so then the f5 came after that f5 probably would be the first one then with a more modern style grip i would mm. say the one that we see with all the dslrs and including the current z9 cameras yeah so again that was uh, the design by a uh, well giorgio giorgetto <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes so I, i'm Auto so guy, right? yeah. the car guy yeah so um the car guy exactly him yeah. yes so th- that well that would be his influence for sure in terms of design not in terms of the specs uh but tech Technically, F4 had a small grip. Even F3 had a small grip as well. Um, so I guess we saw the evolution between between the two. Who, 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 yeah. who, which brand can claim it? Can can oh, the brand? Oh, that's that a million question. Really? Well, while Becky will stop, I'm just going to Google it up. You know? <laughs> no, I have no idea actually. Because bragging I mean, points, you know, bragging points. Yeah, I, bragging points. Exactly. I I'm actually not sure because I'm trying to think who else was making that style of of slr at that time well if you have an answer tell us because that would be very interesting <laughs> I, to know i i actually saw a comment on uh i don't know where on a z9 review and someone said ah oh, nikon is copying canon r3 with oh, the z9 oh that's oh, that's, that's always cool. yeah that, that, that's kind of a, the the you know <laughs> the, the, those kind of <laughs> happening i think even 50 60 years ago you yeah. know where you have those kind of well like you know in in like if you play games you know, there are always console wars playstation is better than xbox and stuff so so there's always like oh nikon is better than canon can etc and obviously now we have sony and fuji and you know all other brands kind of you know now so i'm that, very that, curious I, I want to kind of settle it and and to be able to say that you know nikon probably did it first and i i can't figure it out because i figured out f4 sort of had a small grip but that's about it mm. the difficult even the to know the f3 had a slight grip um mm. the f3 and the fa which both came out around the same time yeah. so it's when did it go from that complete flat design to that put your answers on a postcard no i'm just no i'm sure <laughs> if you check the comments i'm sure someone will tell us yeah M- matthew card f5 he says matthew card Well, the F5 is more, more than it. one, that's for sure. So that's the style of grip that we see now pretty much in all current, right. current cameras, including Z9. Yeah. It's, um, in fact, Ma- Matthew also said the Nikon F4S was the, was the one with the grip. It, the F4S was the bigger of the two F4s, yeah. or the three F4s, which actually had the built-in sort of motor drive. But you could get the standard F4, which had a small grip yeah. around it. And then F4E was somewhere in between those two. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know what? You know what scares me when I see Nikon guys are so knowledgeable, they know so much. You know what? What's scary about that? That Jared <laughs> Polin was right, and he said all Nikon people are old. Old. I I was I was really offended <laughs> when he said that, <laughs> and now I realize that Nikon guys always seem to know everything. How do they know it? Because they were they were there. They they were around when things happened. Yeah, it, I, I don't so Jared know. Jared is probably right. It's really interesting actually, in terms of like an age. an age group i do find that a lot of nikon users a present company accepted are of a certain age bracket yeah. but that's that. not a, but no, <laughs> i said Don't present company. Jared Polin, right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, it's interesting because for example we were chatting to rishi from nikon um about a year ago when he was here for i think the zfc launch and we were talking about how the zfc had been targeted to sort of younger younger people that was mm. what nikon said in their marketing they said this is for young influencers <laughs> yes kk hipsters yes yeah, yeah and um and we were saying to him you know like the majority of our viewers tend to be of a certain age group but also a certain majority of our customers but that's probably just because of the length of time that the shop's been around and the relationships that gray has kind of garnered over those over all those years and he said oh that's really interesting my average viewer is you know 20 
or 25. That's true. That's true. We were surprised as well. And he just does Nikon and nothing else. So that did, I don't think Jared's completely correct then. In, in yeah, that's... yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's an interesting one because I have a theory for, for that because... Not that I'm old. <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when I went to college, um, I studied in London. Um, I went to college to study photography. I'm here because in Russia, you don't have this type of education at all. So our technical department, so me, media department, had all Nikons. So, mm-hmm. you know, and I mean, I used Nikon camera before, but my first digital was Digital Hundred was borrowed from them, and I was using it on the shoot. So that's how I grew up. So. They are not doing those things anymore. They're not supplying equipment to the colleges and to universities for the young people to use those cameras. And I think it's very important because that brings a new generation of people using your equipment. That's number one. And obviously, number two is the marketing. And I think, you know, if you look at, let's say, Sony, I think they've done really well with their marketing because, you know, every YouTuber says how Sony is great and everyone else is dying. So, you know, Mm. so I think there's definitely something that had to be addressed and, this well, last year we start to see the shift in the way the Nikon does their marketing because we start to see more cameras in the hands of photographers, YouTubers, and professional photographers as well. They start to supply those equipment to say, Here's the equipment, test it, tell us what you think. And we didn't have it before. Before it was a very small group of people, and that's all we had. While well, let's say Sony, basically everyone yeah. on the corner would, would just you know say how Sony is great. So this shift we're starting to notice, which is very good because it becomes more Western approach compared, let's say, to more conservative Japanese approach. But yeah. I like- you know, I, 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 yeah. Sorry. Pavel. No, go for it. Go for it. I don't want to cut your. No, I, I just understand why Constantine is uh, a sensor snob now because that's the that's the only reason cameras are relevant because you know you can I I don't see a large sensor fit in this. No. Going forward, yeah. So and the cleanliness of the files, the colors, fidelity of the colors that you will get from the cameras. That's that's the only reason. And you know what? What is surprising is that. Um, if you look at small businesses today who can't hire an agency, for example, a marketing agency, they have to do marketing themselves and they have to do video marketing. So they have to create some content and they'll have to, at the moment you are on to outsource it, it's going to be very expensive. Mm. So I see the relevance of cameras only going up because the need for storytelling is going to, is becoming bigger. Yeah. Right. So uh, this is like, Everyone is saying the industry is dying, but I see that in future, this is going to be a very important skill for everyone. Even if you have a, like a local food shop, you know? I think, yeah, yeah I think the community, the Nikon community is strong. Uh, you remind me of uh, the Northrop saying that Nikon should sell everything to Apple. Remember that? <laughs> I didn't know that they said that actually. <laughs> well, that was back in the day when there was a uh, narrative Nikon was dying. So no, that's not, that's, that's well, been the narrative. I can tell you that that has been, Gray has told me that that has been a thing that has been said for the, he's been in camera businesses, not just <clears throat> Gray's, but previously working at other camera dealerships himself when he was younger. They've been saying that for 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I point. The point I've, has no value unless someone can say, someone can show why Apple should buy Nikon. Hmm. Why should Apple yeah. buy Nikon? I know. Uh, no it's reason. Funny. So. He's, be- he's begging somebody to give him a Z9, actually. I don't know if he got one. But, hey, I have a, uh, I've used all cameras, guys. Like, I've used them all. And I think Nikon has, it feels the best in my hand. That's the most important thing. If I'm not comfortable pulling the trigger or holding the camera, and I love Nikon lenses, like Sony, Sony's doing great things with their technology, but mm-hmm. they just don't feel good in my hand. I, I just yeah, don't, I, I don't know. But you get used to, isn't it? It's like, it's, I can't it's get used to it. With. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I got a friend who shoots Canon. He doesn't get on with my, I've given him my Nikon many, many times and said, look, can you just use this for a day? And he's like, I don't know where the buttons are. <laughs> But I'd be the same if I borrowed his Canon. I just, I don't get on with it. And I know my my camera's like the back of my hand. So I think having the confidence in your product is, and and the familiarity is is at least half of it, not just the technology that's inside it. But if you're not going to use your camera, then there's not much point. Yeah, absolutely. But I've, seen, yeah. But I've seen people appreciate Nikon more once I've come back from Fuji or Sony or Canon. 
mm. then they oh i had a I, i had a good thing going on with nikon it was great but when you were in the system and i haven't tried other things then you think the grass is always greener on the other side right so oh, maybe that yeah yeah, yeah. the thing yeah. about that i think they are all great they all great it doesn't yeah. matter what you use but that's the thing we like nikon it doesn't mean that we only use nikon you know or you know The thing is, at the end of the day, you're a photographer. You decide the tool you want to use, and normally the decision of tool you're going to use, yes, yeah, sometimes based on specs, but a lot of it based on experience. Yeah. So in terms of this, look, if you shoot Canon, if you shoot Sony, that's absolutely fine. And if there are people who shoot Nikon and they're happy with Nikon, that's absolutely fine. So let's not blame each other. And you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, that's the thing. Like that's what we don't understand. Where people get so upset about that my brand is better than another one. They all cameras. They all tools. Yeah. What graphic tools to produce an image at the end of the day you are a person who decides which brand to use that's what it is exactly right. i've always question. seen go for it go for it bro. no 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 uh, you you go I'll, i have a question uh do you, you get trade-ins right you guys get trade-ins yeah so what if do you guys accept uh, other brand what if somebody brings you right now a 1dx mark three to trade in do you guys we send yeah. them around the corner oh to, <laughs> to the other camera shop. <laughs> no, there's another camera shop around the corner that just deals with secondhand cash converters. Yeah, no, it's not a cash converter. Um, we we don't take in non Nikon equipment. Uh, our secondhand department is is solely Nikon. Um, and that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I think to to be honest, that is our probably our strength and our weakness. Our relationship with Nikon is very symbiotic. If they didn't, you know, give us the stock, then we'd have. <laughs> difficulties although yeah so your ex- your exclusivity reminded me of a comment jerry guiones uh told me last week he's like man i don't know i just use nikon and i don't know what the other manufacturers are with video mm. i guess he said like i i like nikon and i use nikon he said he made a really good point where he he sticks to the art and the posing and the creative aspect of photography uh, versus you know getting into all the types of arguments about gear this is better this is better so yeah your camera shop is a perfect example of that too i mean i love nikon and you guys are exclusively nikon and for sure me and frames if we're out in the uk one day we'll give you guys a visit for sure um Absolutely. definitely got to say hello any uh you guys I saw uh, Matt Granger walk in there and Richie uh any other you know famous pros walk in lately to your shop I mean we have a lot of pros they're not necessarily famous on YouTube but um but we have quite a large regular clientele we sold camera to Phil Collins recently Oh yeah <laughs> oh, no. Phil okay. Collins Yeah but I mean we we do have quite a a large client base not all of them can we mention um well, I can roll man that guy's yeah. a badass drummer absolutely he's a great he singer too well he would have three or oh, three hp three titanium HP. something yeah. like that yeah yeah um wow. and also i mean we have the the lovely david suchet who a lot of people know over there because he he played poirot hercule poirot for many years um which was a uh, was a really well known obviously Agatha Christie character and he was he was a long long term customer he's actually using Leica at the moment now but he still has a, a place in his heart for Nikon um and then i mean in terms of actual professional photographers like David Yarrow is uh is one of our lovely and regular customers he's a phenomenal fine art photographer he's worked with massive names um you want really- uh, do you have a Ashton Kutcher sighting there <laughs> he shoot with Nick on. <laughs> I'll invite him over. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, all all kinds of people. Um, one of my favorites actually was Sersha Ronans, who she came in during a workshop day. So it was only myself and and one other person on the shop floor, and she bought an F3 because someone on the film set. I think she was working on. Uh, she'd either been working on Little Women or. Me, uh, or what was it mary queen of scots was that the, yes yeah yes, it was queen one of, of those scots, two yeah. film sets that she was working on and she yeah. was like oh you know my director of photography said i should come here oh anyway, absolutely lovely yeah. and 
It's great. I'm, yeah, and the good thing is everyone is welcome. That's the thing. I, yeah. we, we have this notion where people say, oh, I have to dress up to come to the shop. No. <laughs> and you definitely don't. It's so true. We get people know, that come yeah. in off their courier bike and hop in for, exactly. you know, during lunch to come and look at cameras and stuff. We, we really don't have a thing on it. If you have a consideration about what you're wearing, it's like it's, pff, the staff don't mind. If you like cameras, we, we welcome you. <laughs> Albert so, says... Albert says if Ansel Adams were still alive today, he would serve as a Nikon chief ambassador. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be sure, lovely. I'm sure, yeah. wouldn't it be amazing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there were some there were some really nice comments earlier. I was just keeping a an eye on the uh, on the thing. There was, for example, Fell said, I think Nikon owes a lot to you, the Nikon community, especially the Nikon community on YouTube. And he's glad to be part of it. And I think uh, I think it's true. I think we've created this. I don't know if other brands have this because I don't really pay much attention. Well, we, we don't know. But yeah, it's something, as you mentioned before, that the Nikon community kind of step up. Mm. And, you know, there were so, so many photographers like yourself, you know, then creating the channels to talk about love for the Nikon gear, but not just the gear itself, but actually photography as well. And I think we haven't seen that back in 2019 or so so yeah. like a lot more new faces and definitely people who love nikon just for the cameras not for the you know b- brand wars or specifications and things like this yeah yeah so, so i want to go ahead yeah. oh, go ahead go ahead now i i just wanted to know how you how you got into photography like how, how did it happen um, how did I into photography? uh my late grandparents all of them were photographers in some form or another. I mean, we always had cameras around oh. in my in my house. Um, so my grandfather was a Nikon shooter. My grandmother, she liked anything that was point and shoot and easy to use, but she was always taking pictures. And uh, so I was I started taking pictures when I was a kid. I just enjoyed. I enjoyed it. And that was before we had phones that would do that. I mean, I'm showing my age now, but <laughs> we actually had to take a camera somewhere. Yeah. You couldn't just snap a picture on your phone. So I used to go down to the, yeah. the, the DMP place, which was on the corner and then hand in my roll and then wait patiently for two hours because it was a bit cheaper than one hour mm. and then go back and get my prints and stuff. So I always enjoyed the process. Um, and then when I was at school, I started shooting with a D100. One of my friends showed me just the basics of aperture and shutter speed and stuff like that. And, and then I was stuck to it and that was it that's cool yeah that's cool i've uh i think i says uh like i've started photography when i was about 13 you know it's like you hit that age where you kind of start to think about other things than just you know running around the streets and you know whatever doing <laughs> th- you know yeah exactly throwing <laughs> snowballs you know so uh kind of when you start to hit that age yeah kind of i i, I really start to get into arts you know so photography was one of the things and i wow. My father had a Zenith camera, so I'm from Russia. So I used his camera pretty much till I was about 18. Then I went to New York for a summer as a student exchange uh, program. And that's where I bought my first Nikon, which was F100. And uh, basically I was with Nikon after that. And I came to England literally after I came back from New York because I decided like, yes, I want to go and actually study photography. And the closest place to Russia where you could actually have um, photographic education as well as speak English and no other languages because that's the only thing I, I've learned a little bit so uh, that was London and that's how I ended up here and then I'm pretty much here for what like 17 years now so yeah that's great you know, yeah. I mean incredible reasons uh, yeah uh, <laughs> yeah we all start somewhere uh, but it, I back to the Nikon thing I think like there's some type of magic when we use Nikon glass. I think if we were to compare what other brands get me excited, it's like Nikon is Leica-esque and Zeiss-esque. You know, they, they're like, they have mm-hmm. that that character in some of the lenses, you know, the Leica glass. And because I, I love Leica, I mean, I'm a big fan of Leica. But uh, Nikon is just, it's just Nikon. You know, that's how I got to say. Nikon is just Nikon. Solid camera solid product one thing uh what real quick answer what's the biggest feature for each one of you guys uh the z9 what's your most important feature on the z9 uh for me it's definitely the the improved animal af 
that algorithm is phenomenal. I, I actually managed to get along really well doing a little bit of wildlife photography with my Z6. I don't actually, it's not fast, but I, I know how to use it. Um, but the Z9, it's just, it's astonishing, particularly for like birds and um, bird IAF. That, that shocked me when I tried that out. I, I was really amazed at how well it did. Mm. Uh, so that's it for me. And what's it for you? Yeah, I think in general, let's focus. Um, it's uh, for me, I, I, it, well, it sounds controversial and I repeat it several times. So I said that D850 was still my to-go professional camera. And I would stick to D850 until we get something that can replace D850 from performance point of view and reliability. And Z9 for me is the camera that can now replace D850 for commercial work. So that's where, you know, for me is the main improvement. And I think that's a lot of people pointed out as well. It's, it's almost feels DSLR like, and that's what the, the kind of the usability, it's almost feels like having, you know, something like G6 in your hands. Mm. That's awesome. All right. Well, uh, frames, you got one more question. I have like two or three rapid fire questions and we'll no, no, I, you, uh... I, 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 I'm just, I won't listen now. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> i want to All say right. as a sensor snob i want to say resolution the size of the sensor but i'm not going to say that yeah <laughs> it's been very on brand for yeah. you to say that for you <laughs> yeah i have a question uh, do you guys have any other hobbies besides i mean other than photography do you guys what are your hobbies uh Shall I go? You have to yeah. think. Yeah, I mean, no, you, you've I got a lot more than I've me. I've got so, a yeah. lot. Um, I paint, but I also write. I have uh, three books that I've published and wow. one more which is being published this October, uh, which is historical fiction. So I, I tend to keep my time pretty well filled between my kids and writing and photography and the shop and YouTube and stuff. Oh, that's, yeah, that's enough for me. Looks pretty much field, isn't <laughs> I was it? I just so like every okay. minute is accounted for in my day pretty much. <laughs> yeah that's great gosh no i don't have anything like that i'm not yeah, right I, Actually, I, I like I, talking about but i can't write um i feel the pressure <laughs> no, but you, i mean, I mean what you, do i have you have a dog and he's a full-time <laughs> job this is, yeah no i love to spend time with my family yeah i you know i i like to read you know, I like to listen to music. I like, no, but... Um, you like long walks on yeah. the beach. <laughs> to, to be honest with photography, uh, for me, I try to concentrate on personal projects that I that I shoot year over year. So, and that's something that I don't really publish, but I do it myself. So, so generally in my free time, I would do wow. that. And that's what, where, where my medium film photography comes in. So it's something that I do in my spare time. We have obviously a great pleasure of trying all the new equipment you know here and that's that's fantastic i mean my first year at grace i was basically living in the second hand department borrowing lens almost every day coming home and shooting with it so so photography is from my point of view i like from like i like to shoot personal projects as well as commercial projects so that's why i'm by a part of it is yeah family is a big thing for me mm, that's awesome you should uh con you should ask Pagan the same question back he put you in <laughs> What is your well? We know what your hobbies are, but tell Look us. That. My hobbies. Yeah. Rock and roll. Rock and Here roll. We go. <laughs> oh, that's an easy answer. I forgot. Shit, that was easy. That was easy. Uh, I love everything. Yeah, I love uh, music. I love movies. I love uh, pretty much everything. Going out, hanging out with friends. I was a gambler back in the day, but I stopped. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 aren't they the bad guys I mean, poker <laughs> you know yeah so yeah no more las vegas for you <laughs> no no we got local casinos now you don't need to travel to las vegas we got one like 20 minutes away in la so that's yeah. true wow. <laughs> okay but, someone um, is asking me matthew is asking me how did you get started i want to take better pictures of my girlfriend that's that's a, it's a good way to start photography I, trust me that's that's how i started I, I just got frustrated and it took about uh, about some six, seven years back. It was frustrating. I said, no, I have to learn it myself. <laughs> so Any that's, future, that's cool. Uh, I've seen your street photography your frames. It's, it's excellent. You're in India, so you, you could shoot beautiful things there. A lot of colors. Yeah. Uh, any interesting, I mean, any future talks with Nikon shooters that, you know, you want to let us know about guys like uh sit downs 
Well, we definitely, uh, we're just nailing down the final timings for a chat with Matt Irwin, which is going to be fun. We're trying to do that before I go away. So the idea is this Friday, we're just trying to work out an appropriate time difference because he's obviously 11 hours ahead of us. Um, and we normally stream at two o'clock in the afternoon. So, <laughs> so it's a bit, I don't think he wants to stay up until 1am just to speak to us, but we will, we will try and work something out. That's definitely one we want to do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, but a part of this year, yeah, we have a bunch of videos that we want to shoot with that we can't talk about yet. So no. those are kind of under wraps, but uh, yeah, the, after Becky goes, it's going to be just me on the live stream. So let's see what we're going to do. I might you know. just hop in and do something like this just to keep so, an eye on him. Exactly. Where, where are you going? As in- I'm just going to the US to see some family. So I'll be in the States oh. for a few weeks. Just coming to LA. We're going to do some videos together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only no. no, wrong coast, wrong yeah, coast. Yeah, you're in East Coast. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I will do, I will definitely try and do some, do something while I'm out there in amongst everything else. Yeah, she's going to the East Coast. I'm in the West. Rock and roll. So, uh, mm-hmm. Dream gig, guys. What's your dream gig? If you had one subject to shoot, I always ask everybody this. I want to know. Gosh, that's a really good question. Do you have one? You know, um, I would love to be commissioned to do some sort of fashion campaign where they would just say, here's the money, do whatever you want with it. So without any control from art directors, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know. Good, good big budget mm. and a good team around me. I think that would be amazing. So that's what I'm, I would personally look forward to. Yeah. I, I'm more inclined. I want to travel. I'd really like to go to the Galapagos. I'd love to go to Iceland, like places that you can't get photos anywhere else of that mm. particular. I know a lot of photographers have done it, but I, I really, I think that's, that's my bucket list. You know, I want to go to those, those kind of places. That's true. For me, yeah, sorry, for me, United States is actually a big thing I want to travel. We've done LA to Utah all the way up, and we're supposed to go to Grand Canyon and come back to uh, Los Angeles, but uh, we kind of had to cut it short because of COVID. So my hope is to actually come back and maybe either do a big search trip up to San Francisco and Yosemite and Sequoias, or maybe go towards Grand Canyon. But just driving to, you know, towards Joshua, Joshua Tree, Death Valley, and obviously, all the you know Monument Valley in Utah is just such a beautiful thing. I really enjoy that. Yeah, you guys should uh, definitely maybe venture out and do your own YouTube channel. You know, I know Becky if she had like a travel photo channel, those are popular on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little bit of cooking in there. Yeah, throw some <laughs> cooking. And just some done some cooking already. Writing yeah. and some music and yeah, be all that's good. a hit right there. <laughs> yeah, all right, guys, I can well, see that. Yeah. Uh, travel, you know, travel, fantastic travel blog, vlogs. Yeah, um, one of the best in the world. When yeah, when my so. when my kids are a bit bigger, I can I can do that. Just leave them. <laughs> 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 Just go traveling by myself. <laughs> oh, you guys are very great in front of a camera. Talented, you know. If you, you guys know what you're doing on YouTube, especially, you guys have a big following. Uh, mm-hmm. It's growing every day. Right. And uh, just keep at it. You know, stay consistent. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do, and frames as well. But we got some great things on all of our channels. So subscribe, like, everybody. Uh, Ways of Wentzbister, Frames TM. Well, I want to thank you guys thank you. for joining us. We don't want to keep you too long. Um, it was a pleasure. We had fun. Frames, any last question or comment? Yeah, man, it's an inappropriate one. But, you know, okay. I really <laughs> thought... we like those. <laughs> I really thought you guys are either married or somehow related. Oh no. dear, yeah, it's it's been I, popping up in the comments now. No, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, it's like you, you seem to know each other. What you're thinking, you know, the, like the other guy, whatever he's thinking or whatever she's thinking, you guys seem to know that. Know that. That's just okay. experience. Of, Fourteen years yeah. of working together. Yeah. yeah, that is literally just experience. So, um, you, so it, 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 when you are having an argument or fighting, you you almost know what the next. Answer going to be. Like, I know it. Sentences. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> no, we're generally on the same page most of the time. I would say ninety nine point nine percent. So, so that's the good thing, yeah. you know. So, because yeah, we we all passionate about things. So yes, genuinely, I don't. We kind of, as I say, like we kind of have similar vision of what we want to do with the channel, and that's the beauty of it. 
Yeah. Even if we, you know, think about going about things in different ways. Like the other day I handed Con my camera and he had changed all the settings because he didn't understand how I'd set up my Z6 and just <laughs> couldn't use it. He's like, why have you got this? <laughs> um we you know we we have different ways of working but somehow it, it manages to fit together yeah you guys, have, you guys have great chemistry i'm telling you like natural yeah you know? like becky's <laughs> laid back con's like let's do this let's go and she's like all right let's do this you know it's like great yeah. chemistry guys it's hard okay. with two people it's sometimes very difficult yeah yeah by the sure. way you can you can tell a lot about a person by the way he sets up or she she sets up the camera. You can see the priorities. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think that could be a dating <laughs> tip. Yes, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Mike okay. says I had outstanding segment. I had a ton of stuff to do today, and I'm on the couch sitting here watching YouTube. I couldn't look away from my favorite of all. My favorites all like together. All right, Mike. Good job, oh, guys. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Mike. One other thing I want to add. If you guys want to see future guests, go ahead and uh, email them. Yeah. Let them know <laughs> about our channels. You know, hey, I'm a fan, you know, because I get a lot of requests. I got some requests for you guys. I got rec- uh, conspiracies. I get that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> the channel. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. That guy's popular. He, people want him on the show, too. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. Uh, this was a Thanks great chat. Much. Had a great time. It's uh, been really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do this it was, again. It was lovely talking oh, definitely. to you. Definitely. Uh, always a pleasure. And yeah, it's it's been very enjoyable. Me too, guys. Stay safe. Rock and roll. This is Vahography Talk. Number 16 in the books. And go ahead and you can stream it Apple on Apple Podcast as well on YouTube. Thank you guys. Thank you so I used much. to think yeah. that I used to think that English people are very uptight, but you guys are not at all. Well, he's not English, so he, a, he's know. let off, but yeah. I, I am very English. I am British. <laughs> You're British, <laughs> but not English, yeah. With a you know, with a 90% of Russian in me. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. we're gonna oh, we're great. gonna end it. That's where we end it. That fantastic. We're gonna end it here with you guys. Say rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> Is that what we do? Yeah. Rock <laughs> and roll. Nice. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. See you later. Thank you very much. Bye. You're welcome. Cheers.